And yet I want to say this, for all the bravado with which these present their views, I want to say this, theirs is a dead faith. And let me explain to that. I call it that because in the final analysis, atheism and liberalism have nothing to offer people in the tough times of life. Let me illustrate with a conversation I had with a fellow on the plane 10 years ago right now. It was 2011, I was flying to Ukraine to teach at a Bible college there, Zaporozhye Bible College. And I sat next door to a fellow who, when we got to know each other, he said he was from Greece, that he was working on his doctorate in psychotherapy at the University of Washington in Seattle, and that he was heading back home for Greece for a short time. And he was not quite yet finished his uh, program of studies. And so since he was Greek, from Greece, and my parents used to go when I was a little boy, they used to, in Saskatchewan, they used to go to a, a Russian Greek Orthodox church. And I remember uh, thinking, well, you know, that connection, maybe he went to church, let's get, I can maybe get a conversation going uh, with him, make a connection in that way. And so I asked him, I said, have you ever gone to church? And he said to me, uh, or I said, do you go to church? And he said, no, he said, I don't. And I said to him, do you mind if I ask you why? And he said, well, I'm an atheist and I don't believe in God. And he said, besides, if there is indeed a God, he said to me, why are there so many tragedies? Why is there so much suffering in the world? How do you account for that? And so I said to him, okay, let me ask you a question. I said, let's say you were right and there is no God. Okay, your position is true. There is no God, atheism is correct. Then I said to him, I want to know what's your answer to all the suffering in the world? Why is there suffering in the world? Why are there tragedies happening in the world? There's no God, but there's still tragedy, still suffering happening in the world. I said, tell me why, I wanna know. He looked at me with the blankest expression on his face and he said, I don't honestly know. Remember, he was working on his doctorate in psychotherapy. I asked him, do you wanna know how I view suffering in this world and why it hasn't destroyed my faith in God? And he said, yeah, I do. And I said, actually, I said, that, you know, you, you need to know this. If you don't believe in God, when tragedies happen to you, your only option ultimately is to curse the blind, uncaring fate that so capriciously let it happen to you. And I said, your only recourse is to get angry and blame nothing and nobody. And I said to him, and you know what, young fella? Be sure. Suffering is coming down the pike for you as well, if it hasn't already. No one gets to skate through life problem free. I said, you're gonna get married and you'll have a little daughter. And when she's four years old, one day she'll come to you and she'll say to you, daddy, I have a headache. And you take her to the doctor and the doctor does the examination and he comes back and he says, she has an inoperable brain tumor. I said, what are you going to do then? I said, for myself, rather than choosing to believe in blind, uncaring fate, I would choose rather to believe that the universe and all the events in it are the result of a personal, loving, omnipotent God the Bible talks about. And I said further, I believe this God is sovereign and in complete control of everything on planet Earth. And he has promised that he's going to take everything that happens in life, including the bad things, and he's going to turn it together for good to those who love, love him even those things that seem to devastate. And I said, I don't want them to happen to me, but if they do happen to me, that's how I'm going to choose to look at it. It's going to somehow become good in the final analysis for me. And I concluded with this statement. I said, you know what? There's a possibility I'm wrong. There's a chance. I said, maybe I die and I find out, you know what? That wasn't true. There is no redeeming purpose to suffering. It didn't turn out for good. I said to him, what then? Well, what have I lost? I've gone through life. I've lived in this kind of delusion, this uh, stress-free, peaceful world, a relaxed life. Now I find out I'm wrong, but who cares? It's a win-win situation for me. You know what he did? He took his um, book. You know the blanks we have in the, in the planes? And he tore the blanket open. He put the blanket on the seat and he put the blanket all around his head and everything and he got a book out and for the rest of the flight he, he read inside that blanket. <laughs> I, I, I think it's our block to the world. You see, atheism and theological liberalism are bankrupt. 
They have nothing to offer for people in the moments of deepest distress and struggle. Atheism and liberalism only work when things are going good in life. 